smells, if you like it. Slimy stewards. Introducing the lightest weapon in the war against the plague. The Whiffy Jar. Hello, I'm a steward doctor. Now, we all know that the plague is spread by bad smells. Well, there's only one way to stop it. That's right, with more bad smells. Makes sense, doesn't it? Not really. It makes sense. You simply take a jar and collect as many guffs as possible in it. There. Then, as soon as anyone is feeling unwell, you simply give them a whiff of it. Oh, there you go, old boy. Feeling any better now? No! Anything, I feel worse. Oh, that's worse than his. Seriously, we're doing this now. I'm ill. Sorry. Here's how we think it works. The bad air of the trump farts off the bad air that's carrying the plague, leaving you 100% plague free. In tests, the Whiffy Jar proved just as effective as wiping a chicken's bottom against your plague sores. The Whiffy Jar. Now with a new easy refill system. Buy now while you last. <laughs> oh dear, I think we better. Hmm? <sighs> better safe than sorry. The Whiffy Jar, available from all good bottoms. We stewards may have had some slightly odd ideas about medicine, but we did have some great scientific thinkers. So Charles II established the Royal Society as a place for clever folk to meet. People like diarist Samuel Pepys and astronomer Edmund Halley. Here is your tea, Pepys. Oh, thank you. Britain's favourite diarist enjoyed a cup of tea with Mr Halley. Must you write everything down, Pepys. If a man is to keep a diary of everything that happens in London town, he must keep a diary of everything that happens in London town, replied the quick-witted diarist to the mumbling astronomer. It's finished. It's finished. It's finally finished. Sir Isaac Newton did enter the Royal Society in high spirit. Must you write everything down, Pepys? Oh, if a man is to keep Don't a diary... Don't get him started. So what have you finished, Newton? Only the single most important literary work in the history of science, the Principia. It contains the law of universal gravitation, the laws of motion, the very foundations of classical mechanics. Blah, 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 boring, blah, 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 yawn, blah, 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 blah. Why, this is brilliant. This will change the way people understand the mechanical workings of the universe. Uh, peeps, the Royal Society must publish this forthwith. Uh, Is there a problem? It's just possible that I may have spent all of the Royal Society's money. On what? On publishing this. The, the History, History of, of fishes. fishes. At which point everyone did agree the History of Fishes was the most marvellous book ever. Who on earth needs to read a massive book on the history of fishes? Why, fish historians, of course, countered the razor-sharp diarist. And how many fish historians do you know? One. Apart from the bloke who wrote the book. Nan. You're an idiot. Write that down. Don't want to. <laughs> Don't. I am an idiot, wrote the idiot Peeps. My quill. All right, all right. There's a way we can work this out, Newton. There is. I am not without means myself. I'm loaded. Yeah, pretty loaded. So perhaps I could advance you the fifty pounds you need to publish your Principia. But Halley, thanks to fish brain here, the Royal Society is now penniless. How will it ever pay you back? With unsold copies of the history of fishes? <laughs> <laughs> Useful in winter, I suppose. Good to read in front of an open log fire, agreed the popular diarist. Good to use instead of the logs. <laughs> it's true, Sir Isaac Newton, the man who discovered gravity, nearly didn't have his most important book published at all because of a big book about fish. I squid you not. All right, you come up with a better fishy pun then. Mull it over and let me know. Bam, bam! <laughs>